Little Red Riding Hood. Ice breaking activities. Why do we all love fairy tales? Because it isn't just children. Hollywood has recently produced a number of films based on traditional fairy tales for the adult market. You should begin by making a list of fairy tales you know, and then brainstorming characteristics that describe those fairy tales using the common elements of fairy tales. Do you know the fairy tales Little Red Riding Hood? How well do you remember any fairy tales? Tell me the common elements of fairy tales. You should pause the video clip for five minutes, work on your own or in the group, list all the common elements of fairy tales with examples from the fairy tales that you remember. Common Elements of Fairy Tales 1. A fairy tale usually begins with once upon a time. 2. Fairy tales are set in the past usually a long time ago. 3. Fairy tales have fantasy, supernatural, or make-believe aspects. 4. They usually have clearly defined good characters versus evil characters. 5. Royalty is usually present in a fairy tale, such as a beautiful princess, handsome prince, castle, etc. 6. Involves magic elements, which may be magical people, animals, or objects. Magic may be positive or negative. Examples, giants, elves, talking animals, witches, or fairies. 7. Focus the plot on a problem or conflict that needs to be solved. Problem solution 8. May include objects, people, or events in threes. For example, it may take three tries to solve the problem. 9. Fairy tales usually have happy endings they all lived happily ever after, which is usually based on the resolution of the conflict or problem. 10. Fairy tales usually teach a lesson, have an underlying theme or demonstrate values important to a culture. Read after me. Right. Wrong. Tone. Justice. Injustice. Fear. Greed. Jealousy. Perseverance. Punishment. Retribution. Mercy. Royalty. Poverty. Magic. Problem. Conflict. Solution. Moral. Lessons. Now. Listen to the story of Little Red Riding Hood. Use your knowledge of fairy tales to make predictions during listening to the fairy tale Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood By Charles Perrault Once upon a time there lived in a certain village a little country girl, the prettiest creature who was ever seen. Her mother was excessively fond of her, and her grandmother doted on her still more. This good woman had a little red riding hood made for her. It suited the girl so extremely well that everybody called her little red riding hood. One day her mother, having made some cakes, said to her, Go, my dear, and see how your grandmother is doing, for I hear she has been very ill. Take her a cake, and this little pot of butter. Little red riding hood set out immediately to go to her grandmother who lived in another village. As she was going through the wood, she met with a wolf, who had a very great mind to eat her up, but he dared not, because of some woodcutters working nearby in the forest. He asked her where she was going. The poor child, who did not know that it was dangerous to stay and talk to a wolf, said to him, I am going to see my grandmother and carry her a cake and a little pot of butter from my mother. Does she live far off? said the wolf. Oh, I say, answered Little Red Riding Hood. It is beyond that mill you see there, 
at the first house in the village. Well, said the wolf, and I'll go and see her too. I'll go this way and go you that, and we shall see who will be there first. The wolf ran as fast as he could, taking the shortest path, and the little girl took a roundabout way, entertaining herself by gathering nuts, running after butterflies, and gathering bouquets of little flowers. It was not long before the wolf arrived at the old woman's house. He knocked at the door, tap, tap. Who's there? Your grandchild, little Red Riding Hood, replied the wolf, counterfeiting her voice, who has brought you a cake and a little pot of butter sent you by mother. The good grandmother, who was in bed, because she was somewhat ill, cried out, pull the bobbin, and the latch will go up. The wolf pulled the bobbin, and the door opened, and then he immediately fell upon the good woman and ate her up in a moment, for it had been more than three days since he had eaten. He then shut the door and got into the grandmother's bed, expecting little Red Riding Hood, who came some time afterwards and knocked at the door, tap, tap. Who's there? The little Red Riding Hood, hearing the big voice of the wolf, was at first afraid. But believing her grandmother had a cold and was hoarse, answered, It is your grandchild, little Red Riding Hood, who has brought you a cake and a little pot of butter mother sends you. The wolf cried out to her, softening his voice as much as he could, pull the bobbin, and the latch will go up. The little Red Riding Hood pulled the bobbin, and the door opened. The wolf, seeing her come in, said to her, hiding himself under the bedclothes, put the cake and the little pot of butter upon the stool, and come get into bed with me. The little Red Riding Hood took off her clothes and got into bed. She was greatly amazed to see how her grandmother looked in her night clothes, and said to her, Grandmother, what big arms you have. All the better to hug you with, my dear. Grandmother, what big legs you have. All the better to run with, my child. Grandmother, what big ears you have. All the better to hear with, my child. Grandmother, what big eyes you have. All the better to see with, my child. Grandmother, what big teeth you have got. All the better to eat you up with. And, saying these words, this wicked wolf fell upon little Red Riding Hood, and ate her all up. You can pause the video clip while read aloud the fairy tale. Next, you should work together in small groups to read, discuss, and analyze fairy tales. What did the wolf want to know? What does the wolf do when he enters the house? Where is the wolf when the little girl arrives? What did Little Red Riding Hood do when she reached her grandmother's house? What did the wolf say his big eyes were for? What did the wolf say before jumping out of bed? What is the moral lesson of the story? Moral. Children, especially attractive, well-bred young ladies, should never talk with strangers, for if they should do so, they may well provide dinner for a wolf. I say wolf, but there are various kinds of wolves. There are also those who are charming, quiet, polite, and assuming, complacent, and sweet, who pursue young women at home and in the streets. And unfortunately, it is these gentle wolves who are the most dangerous ones of all. Read other versions of this fairy tale and compare and contrast with this one. While working in small groups to read, discuss, and analyze the fairy tale you should compile a list of common elements, collaborate on your own original fairy tales. Each student decides what kind of experience to write about, brainstorm and write using hamburger template and Venn diagram for compare and contrast. Composes and revises a fairy tale, and finally presents their story to the rest of the class.